at the Porsche Club of America, our breakfast. You gotta be a club member. Uh, getting some coffee and some breakfast out here, probably about, I wanna say, probably about 80, 80 Porsches all year. All years, all different years, all different styles, race cars, uh, regular commuter type cars. What's going on, man? He's by, he was out here schooling me earlier about um, some other things right here. What's going on, guys? We confirmed your wheels are stock. Here's a red one with your wheels and silver. Okay. So your, your wheels my, are my, wheels. Okay. What about that other car that drove up? The That's, one that. It's a previous year. So previous year. Line. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, everybody's out here supportive, helpful. Everyone's inquisitive. And uh, people are very knowledgeable about the cars that they're driving. So. It's good to get out here and support everybody that has a car in common. It's a club. A lot of a lot of older men, obviously, because you got you got to have a little bit of money to drive a vehicle like this. But a lot of the owners here have had cars uh, like four or five different types of Porsches in their life. So they're really committed to the brand, and you know it's a fun car to drive and it's a fun club to be a part of and network. Here we got Porsches. We got puppies, and every now and then we we see some feet, man. Let's get another cold start in the building. Boom. To be fair, already started it up, but man, let's take a ride and talk about how I was able to uh, afford buying this car, man. Let's get this one. All right, man. We are about to get on the road. We gonna take it up to about 115 easily here. All right, we got a need. Vogue speed. Let's see how fast we can get it on its own ramp right there. Easily, I mean, an easy handle. Let me check. Let me check. We easily got it up right there. 115. Blinkers on. Easily. One, two, three. Hey, man. It's an easy thing. It's a very easy thing to do. I love driving this car. It handles well. It easily goes up 100 and something miles an hour without you barely doing any uh, effort. Accelerates quickly. I mean, zero to 60. I don't even know, man. I'm not the stat guy. But it's a fun car. Fun car to drive. And it's it makes very few mistakes. So, very fun car. Easily right there. 106 with no problem, with very little effort. Sunday drivers out so I really couldn't open it out on this road but let's go grab a bite to eat and we'll talk about specifically how I was able to make this dream happen all right this wasn't something that was an impulse buy this was something that I worked uh, entirely hard for for three years and something that I had on my vision board for about 10 years Summer House over in Corona Del Mar. As you can see, nice, quaint restaurant. This is where I bring all the jasmine rights and the grilled steaks. <laughs> this is where I do it. All right, let's talk about how I was able to afford that car. I know a lot of people come to the vlog and they think, you know, that I might be rich or wealthy or something like that. And I've had things like that all my life. As you guys know, go back to my vlog where I showed you, man, 10 years ago. Almost 10 years ago, I was living in my car. So um, to be from that point to here, going through a tremendous time in my life to be here, it's just I'm very thankful and grateful. And it took a lot of hard work to get to this point and dedication. So let's talk about it. You see the vehicle. You see how, uh, you see what it is. You see what it represents. How did I get there? Uh, number one, I stopped broke dating. I stopped broke dating. 
I stopped broke dating. For real, I stopped broke dating. All right. I wrote the book, The Free Agent Lifestyle, with the idea of I wasn't happy with the place that I that I was in the current dating marketplace. So I had to stop broke dating. Okay, I had to stop dating low hanging fruit. So when I stopped doing that, I was able to get myself in the position where I saved a ton of money. Number two, I drove a bucket for about two and a half years, all right? I bought a BMW 325CI. I bought that vehicle for about $2,500 and it was a beautiful car. I'm gonna try to put a picture of what it was, uh, the car that I had. It was beautiful on the outside. It was more than 10 years old. I bought it for $2,500 cash that I worked hard for in my fitness training business. And I put that towards a vehicle that was kind of messed up on the inside, but on the outside, it was it was shiny and, and, and it, was, it looked good. I liked the vehicle, but it was way outdated. I could not date and bring women in that car, all right? Um, and so it allowed me to focus on what I was doing. Then, with the savings that I got from my fitness business, in which I was earning uh, five figures a month on my fitness business, which I was training people online and I was training high-end clientele in Orange County, California. So I took the money that I earned by saving, by having no car payments for about two and a half years, and I bought a BMW 5 Series 535, and I bought that $10,000 cash, all right? And that vehicle at the time, I think it was about nine or 10 years old, and it had the rims. You guys see my vehicle here. I still have that car. I bought that with about 10K cash, and I used the savings from not having a car payment. So car payments, if you, if you notice the trend here, the car payment is the thing that got me to save the money, all right? So the car payments, not having car payments, got me to be able to afford uh, to save the money each and every month. Then you tack on top of that, not broke dating, okay? So not broke dating, it just, it just took me to another level of savings. So it was the free agent lifestyle on steroids. Okay, so the next phase from that is I wanted a truck before I got the Porsche. So I was able to get the truck by using savings from my fitness brand, and then I was starting to earn money on YouTube. So um, I was working both jobs all day long, training about six to eight clients a day, and then doing live streams and recording YouTube videos. So I had my channel, Coach Greg Adams' channel, starting to take off and earn some money. And it wasn't earning enough money to quit my fitness job, so I was working two jobs. Now, that two-job hustle was combining, I mean, that was like fire and ice, all right? So it allowed me to have two incomes, which were close to full-time. One was close to full-time income, the channel, and then my full-time training business. Then I was doubling up. So then I bought the truck, 20K at a car lot, cash, flat out. It was a utility truck, and I bought the truck to basically customize it the way I wanted it. Again, no car payments. So at that point, I'm like almost 10 years in, no car payments, zero car payments. And not broke dating, just focusing on my hustle, working two jobs. And then that eventually led me to stacking money over about two and a half year period of working the training business full time, doing full time YouTube, and then making two additional channels, which was building revenue stream, doing multiple hustles, not broke dating, not wasting time dating, then I got to travel and all that stuff. So there in life a lot. Doubling up, not wasting time, frivolously dating, uh, wearing black t-shirts. That's another thing, man. I really scrimped on clothes. I didn't go out there and, and, and spend money while on clothes. It was just basically the cars, the vehicles, no car payment, no bro dating, um, nothing flashy in life. I put all the flashy stuff behind me. And I said, for these three, four, five years, I'm going to just sacrifice everything to get myself over the top, over the top. And I used that money from the YouTube and the training business, which I've stopped training um, in person, but I do online training still. So I, I use that money to, to buy the course cash, flat out, flat out cash. So once in a lifetime situation in which I use these five years to basically change my life, change the direction of my life. And it all was a combination of things. Many people think that, you know, I just got blew up on YouTube and I took all the YouTube money and put it towards that. And it simply was not the case. So this is a lesson. This is a lesson uh, for you guys to really take two or three years, maybe five years to sacrifice uh, for the betterment of your life and your future life. So that now then once you get to that point, 
you can work backwards and then get everything that you need to get that you missed in the past. I mean, what did I miss? I'm thinking about it. What did I miss? Obviously, uh, I missed out on some, you know, opportunities to date higher status women by paying for it. But now, those particular women come to me without much effort now. Now it's much easier. Okay? It's much easier now that you have the tools and, and the, the things to leverage with. So many people aren't willing to make that sacrifice. I was willing to make that sacrifice and it worked out for the better. And this is what I hope you can take from this particular stream related to this. All right, man, we're going to get some food, maybe a little bit of drink. Then I got to get back to the puppy and back to work. Movie night. Guess what movie we're watching? How'd you like the movie? It's good. It's good. Just getting the last Christmas preparations all ready. Uh, my kids will be coming back from their mother's house. And uh, we got a little bit, man. You know, with Christmas with teenagers there it's a little bit different so it's not what it used to be the anticipation is not as it's not as thick as when they were kids but it's still all good it's time for family and all that stuff kaylee's finishing up wrapping up presents and uh it's go time christmas i'm the grinch all right merry cheeks mr everybody man we out